What's up, Louisville? Jonathan Masters. Uh, doing a report about Occupy Louisville. So, uh, first one we got. What's up, Brandon Spray? Taco, Ice, DJ, Rob, uh, or Midget, Carl, Dave, the Indian. Can't remember his name. And the uh, rest of the Occupy bunch. So what's what's up? It's a shout out. Uh, it's Wednesday, January twenty fifth, two thousand and twelve, which is one year. Uh, anniversary of the Egyptian Revolution, January 25th, 2011. It's one year later. And it's also day 115 of Occupy Louisville, who's still in Founder Square today. Uh, a little background about Occupy Louisville Jason Ashley Gardner, who is a U of L alumni, and he was also the man who secured the first permit for Occupy Louisville. It was um, also uh, Jason Eisenminger. Um, help write that permit and uh, but Jason Gardner says that Occupy Louisville is about a whole lot more than corporate greed including the death penalty and equal rights for homosexual partnerships according to an article by Joseph Lord of the Courier Journal Rush Cosgrove read a statement um, to the city of Louisville voted and approved by Occupy's General Assembly that said that we will continue to occupy Louisville so that the common voice of the people is heard loudly in these halls until such time as we are convinced its reverberations will continue indefinitely without our presence. Protester Jason Eisenminger is an engineering student at the University of Louisville who also works full time for the university. He filled out a permit request and he paid the $40 processing fee um, for the new permit request. Which I haven't heard anything about and I don't even know if they're operating under a permit right now. Uh, a list of abandoned buildings in Louisville, Kentucky that's available right now for any person being forced to sleep under a bridge are as follows. 945 South 6th Street, 729 South 6th Street, 1031 South 6th Street, 1024 West Main Street is the Beast Slave Building. 609 South 28th Street, 2724 and 2728 West Chestnut Street, and on the corner of Greenwood and 28th Avenue, or yeah, 28th Avenue where the, um, or Greenwood Avenue and 28th Street where the Black Power Ride of 1968 happened, you got 1025, 1027, 1031, 1034, and 1036 that look to be abandoned. You also got 2533 Greenwood Avenue and 1028 South 26th Street. So an update on Occupy Louisville since the Cortez Company bought Louisville Gardens to build their world-class casino. They also bought Founder Square or so that they thought for a dollar per year for the next 99 years. So that was the deal. One dollar per year for the next 99 years and you can have Founders Park. Unfortunately, that deal doesn't uh, hold up since nobody knows who owns Founder Square or how the city came to acquire it. So since they don't know how they acquired it, they don't know how it can be used because it has to be used by however the person given the land designated it, what they designated it as. So if the park was de donated by a nice benefactor, a little old lady with direct orders of making a museum out of it, um, then that's how the land has to be used. It has to be used exactly as the person who donated ordered it to be used. But if it was a place that was bought from some private um, corporation, then the city could do with it as they would please. Uh, but nobody knows how Founders Park was one day considered city of Louisville. In fact, the lawyers call, call Founders Park an undefined space because of this very predicament. So that undefined space that Cortez Companies paid $1 per year for the next 99 years uh, could have been noted, donated by anybody. And here in Kentucky on dark and bloody ground, we got the blood of American Revolutionary War martyrs. We got the blood of the Shawnee Braves and the Chickasaw and the Cherokee and the Uchi Braves. We got the blood of the German Catholics and the Know Nothing Right 1855. We got the blood of the drippings from the strange fruit. The lynchings that were swinging in our trees, uh, a horrible blight on America's and Kentucky's history. 
So that land could have been Frederick Douglass, Sally Hemings, Harriet Tubman. They could have donated Founder Square to the city of Louisville. And if it was somebody great, that would make Founder Square hallowed and sacred ground. And it should be ground that you'd have to remove your sandals to even walk on it. So until we find out who actually owns that park or how it was acquired, they cannot say anything about it. Also, I bet the quarters companies are going to put Center City. Um, it's going to be a casino. I bet they're going to take Louisville Gardens and make a casino out of it. The quarters companies are the same ones that did 4th Street Live, and they're also putting Center City as their next project for Louisville, and they bought Louisville Gardens, and that was the deal where they also bought Founders Park. So, the, um, the Louisville Revolution started on October 4th, 2011. But the fight over Founders Square has gone way uh, further back than that. So you had the Quarters Company's dynasty. They started in 1910. And that was the year after two-year-old Puyi became the last imperial emperor of China. So China had their last emperor. The next year, the Quarters Company dynasty began. John Quarters and his family are shrewd developers. The Quarters Companies are tightly held by four generations of privately held family ownership. Quarters companies are global conglomerate real estate development um, operators of many entertainment districts and casinos throughout the world. So that's why I bet the center city or the city center, center city, city center, is going to be a casino, whatever they're calling it, CC. Uh, the Quarters companies have happened to a ball founder square in the deal that sold the Louisville Gardens to Quarters companies for a gigantic scenic casino. And since I also think it's Casino because uh, Brashear was re-elected and that was his big campaign promise. So this November when Casino is legalizing Casino is on the ballot and it gets voted up, you'll see a Casino right there in the middle of Louisville. The Cordes Company still owns and manages virtually every business that it's created. The Cordes family holds their kingdom with an iron fist. The Cordes Company operates lots of entertainment districts with a range of entertainment businesses such as gaming film as in movies and other private ventures. The Quarters Company enters its 11th decade of well being well capitalized and highly energized to continue its growth. Um, except for in Baltimore where the Quarters Company has nearly bankrupt that town. They nearly bankrupt Baltimore. If you go to their, their 4th Street Live, whatever it's called in Baltimore, it's a ghost town. They got tumbleweeds just blowing in the street. You can hear the crickets in the background. It's a ghost town. It's it's dying out, and they're going to be trying to pump. Or they're actually telling the the people not to. They're taking money from the tenants or something. I forget how that deal went. But Baltimore, check them out. Quarters companies. They're the ones that own Four Street Live, and I'll tell a little bit more about Four Street Live. Uh, it's a big million dollar project. But other things that have started this fight with Occupy Louisville, January twenty first of two thousand and ten. Supreme Court Citizens United decision decides to legalize money in political campaigns. And since we all know that spending money is constitutionally protected under the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. Right? So Mitch McConnell and Rand Paul, who are both stooges for big money, are happy with this decision. So is Mayor Fisher. So the establishment cannot understand uh, how a tent is necessary to accommodate free speech during the wintertime, but they can't understand that dead presidents uh, can talk. They got the right to free speech, right? First Amendment protects money and bullshit. If Mayor Fisher's corporate contributors wanted to pitch a tent and camp out, such as inside communications, or if uh, the Cordes brothers or daughter or sister or the grandfather uh, wanted to throw a tent on the public sidewalk, then Mayor Fisher would have no problem with it. So, the um, Mayor Fisher agrees with Citizens, Uni U Citizens United with that freedom of speech, while he's taking in corporate, corporate contributions. Uh, meanwhile, he's itching to send his thugs into Founders Park in order to beat up a bunch of homeless people. He can't wait. Mayor Fisher cannot wait to beat up some homeless people. Uh, but at uh, the beginning, I see you can go all the way. The fight started in the very beginning. The United States Constitution. It wasn't a given that we even got our freedoms. The Constitution was adopted on September 17, 1787 which is 11 years after the Declaration of Independence. And then the First Amendment, which protects the right to free speech, um, was adopted into the Constitution December 15, 1791, which is four years after 
the Constitution was adopted in 15 years after the Declaration of Independence. So the Patrick Henry gets most of the credit. Patrick Henry is the one that started the Revolutionary War by having a lawsuit that said, who does the taxes get paid to, the colonies or the king? To us or the crown? And then that debate started the Revolutionary War. And then after the Revolutionary War was over, uh, Patrick Henry made sure that we had the Bill of Rights. So Patrick Henry, give me liberty or give me death, that Patrick Henry is essential um, for the founding of our country, but it also shows you that one man can make a difference. Patrick Henry is a great example of one man being able to make a difference. Just like Mike Gravel, Noam Chomsky, Howard Zinn, Ralph Nader, Cynthia McKinney. There's a lot of people actually that have... Uh, Huey Long, Gatewood Galbraith, and um, the Cardinal forgot to say anything about Gatewood Galbraith. Gatewood Galbraith is like the Huey Long of Kentucky for the last 20 years. If you don't know what, uh, anything about Gatewood Galbraith, look him up. And you should have printed something, Cardinal. I'm sure people give a crap about Gatewood Galbraith dying. Y'all missed that one. Anyways, so the Constitution, um, show, you know, it shows that, that the the fight for free speech wasn't a given, even though the federal government had it, there still uh, wasn't applied to the states, so there was just a long process, and eventually, um, evidently, the federal government has a monopoly on the First Amendment rights, Homeland Security, uh, and U.S. Marshal Services the, were on the scene and on the recent marriage between corporations and government demonstration in Louisville, so that's great, even though there's just a bunch of homeless mostly homeless uh, folks out there and, uh, and other uh, protesters. Um, Homeland Security and U.S. Marshal Services were out there, so I wonder how much, that mo uh, how much money that costs us, the taxpayers, to police ourselves, the 99% when we're out on the sidewalk doing a public demonstration. So the Davis S. Cordish's sons, Blake, Reed, and Jonathan, are the ones that have taken over the Cordish companies, which is now a billion dollar company. So Blake, Reed, and Jonathan are the ones who control Cordish companies. The Cordish companies specialize in private, private, public, private ownership where the public is fucked. The public is made to foot the bill for the new sidewalks and the bathrooms and the private plutocracy collects all the profits, um, either directly from the profits or in the form of campaign contributions. 4th Street Live is $66 million project. It cost $66 million for 4th Street Live. It was a complete waste of $66 million. The one time I go to 4th Street Live, I wanted to go get some alcohol, and I, I couldn't get in on the bottom, I walked up the steps, um, and I couldn't get in up there, but there were some people behind the door, and they let a staff person in. The staff person shut the door real quick, and then they all had a big laugh. So I had to walk down the steps, I had to walk around, and then when I finally got in, um, to the place, CBS. I walked up the steps. The security guard was following me all the way up. Um, I don't know if it was because I had a black hoodie on or what the hell it was, but then they followed me all the way down. It was um, it was uncomfortable. It wasn't cool. Fuck 4th Street Live. 4th Street Live, that's where a bunch of middle class uh, yuppies, um, that's where they go to have their fun. Fuck 4th Street Live. It's fucking. <laughs> I will not go back to 4th Street Live. 